Namaste. In this practice, we'll be doing a healing practice specifically for the root chakra. So the root chakra is all about feeling like we belong, feeling like we have our needs met, feeling like we're safe, we're supported financially, we have enough food to eat, we have a safe home, we don't have to worry about where our shelter is gonna come from or where the money is gonna come from. It's also about having a healthy family dynamic. So sometimes we can see patterns later on in our life, such as struggling financially or having a chaotic home environment because those are the traumas that are still unhealed from our early childhood. So this practice is a tantric yoga practice specifically designed to help nourish and strengthen the root chakra. We'll be doing a few asanas, guided meditation, mantra, breath work, and some inner work reflections to help address any unhealed trauma that's being stored in the root chakra so that we can break free of those inner child wounds and finally feel stable in our basic needs. So if you're looking to bring more balance and strength and stability in those areas of your life, I recommend that you do this practice on a regular basis daily until you start to see changes. Because this practice is not only something that you're doing to help draw in or manifest, it's actually helping to get into the subconscious and start to mend things that we buried uh, deep, deep down in our subconscious and haven't quite brought to the surface to heal. So as we keep going into that energy center intentionally, we start to bring all of that unhealed stuff to the surface to finally be looked at, to finally be healed and released so that we can have balance in all of those aspects that I just spoke about. So we'll go ahead and begin. Come to a comfortable seat on your yoga mat. And for this practice, if you have blocks, we'll be using blocks as an option in this practice, but they're not required. You can sit on your block or on a rolled blanket or roll up your mat or just sit on the floor. And right away, as we connect with the ground, I want you to bring awareness to the space in your body where your root chakra is. So the chakras are energy centers and they're correlated to different organs and body parts as well. Imagine a red, ruby red light at the base of your spine, so at your sacrum, or maybe even the place between where your sit bones are touching the earth. And you can close your eyes and put your hands down on your knees, cross leg, hands down for grounding, stability, calming, and anchoring. And as you bring your awareness in your mind's eye to the ruby red light at the base of the sacrum, in between the place where the sit bones greet the earth, take an inhale breath through the nose. And as you breathe in through the nose, imagine the air going down, 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 all the way down into the root chakra. Pull the air through the nose, down the center of the spine, and fill the root with new, fresh air. And then as you exhale, just let it go. Smooth exhale, maybe out through the mouth. You can open your mouth and H-A, ha, sigh. Two more, just like this, deep inhaling through the nose. Feel your belly expand, your ribs expand, and your heart expand as you pull and draw the air down, 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 down. And this time, hold the breath in. And I want you to contract the Kegel muscles or the space between the sit bones and draw in and up intentionally to hold that pranic energy in your root chakra. And as you create this contracting hold, Softly draw your navel in and up, so you're creating a lock beneath the root and on top of the root, charging and holding the pranic energy in the root chakra. See the ruby red light expanding, glowing, and vibrating more and higher as you charge up the root. And then with an exhale, H-A ha, sigh it out. 
We'll do two more like that. These are called Kumbhakas, breath retentions. Inhale through the nose. Soft, smooth inhaling through the back of the throat. Pull the air down, down, down. Hold the breath in at the root. Envision the root at the mind's eye. Kegel muscles engage. Pulling in and up at the root chakra. Navel comes in and back. Hold the breath in. Maybe one more sip of air. Expanding at the root. And exhale, sigh it out. One more, inhaling. Down, down, down. Red ruby light, expanding, rotating, circulating as you hold and charge. And exhale. And then with your eyes closed, bring your hands into your heart center, Anjali Mudra. Just keep a space between your palms like you're holding a soft flower that you don't want to crush. And just holding between the palms, hands soft at the heart center, and bow your head down towards your fingertips. And ask yourself these questions. Do I feel safe in the environment I am in? Do I feel provided for? So no judgment, just doing a little inner work analysis, just being honest. It's okay if the answer is no, and it's okay if the answer is yes. Just checking in. Do I feel provided for? Do I feel safe? Do I feel in my optimal health? Our root chakra is also about our health, our basic needs, not just being financially, but also being nourishment. Do I feel grounded and stable in this chapter of my life? And then just bringing awareness to those answers, we'll chant LAM, L-A-M, which is the seed mantra for the root chakra. And as you chant this LAM, just bring a prayer or an intention to your awareness that if there were any answers that were no, at this time, may you be open to the possibility of turning that no into a yes in your life. That there is a possibility and that there is hope that your no can change to a confident, assured, grounded yes. And so we'll chant along with that prayer that may be guided, may be shown away, may be revealed to me. I am so open for any of those no's to, I would love to know what it would feel like for that to be a firm yes. So with that intention in your heart, we'll chant Lam, take an inhale three times. Lam. Lam. Keep your awareness at your root chakra. See the red light expanding, last one. Lam. Mm, Om Shanti Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. May we have peace in our root chakra. This is a root chakra crystal singing bowl. up that sound, that healing sound, and we'll move into our first asana, which is a toe stand. So because the root chakra is all about the 
foundation of our lives, we start the work at the feet. So if you have root chakra imbalances, you might notice it first and foremost in your feet. So we'll come into a toe stand and I'll turn sideways so you can see. Come onto all fours and bring your knees, your toes, and your heels to touch behind you. Tuck your toes under and lean back to sit on your lifted heels. So if you're sitting on your heels, you move this singing bowl out of the way so you can see. And you might already feel this. So from here, grab onto your pinky toe and your second to last toe and pull them apart so you're spreading the toes. So you're spreading the toes wide and leaning the weight onto the feet. Again, spread your toes on the left foot, the right foot, and lean back. Sit back onto your heels, palms down on your thighs, and breathe. And just feel, I already feel this, this immense tension, and I'm immediately wanting to seek relief. So try to stay as long as you can, but if you need to, you come out, lean forward, take a little break. You can even untuck your toes and just pat your feet on the top of the floor and then come back to your toe stand. So we'll be here for two minutes and I have the time on the clock and we'll be deeply breathing into the root chakra. Ujjayi breath, palms on the thighs, inhale through the nose. Pull the breath in through the back of the throat so it's an audible exhale and as you do, feel your belly expand and the weight of the breath sink down into your room. And as you exhale out through the nose, slow controlled breathing, let the air slowly seep out. Wow, I'm already feeling this so much. So I must have some root things going on. Taking a little break, you can do this at your own pace. Back and forth, take your time. Smooth, deep breathing, a deep whisper in the back of the throat. You can even chant Lam in your head. Or repeat the mantras, I am safe, I am provided for, I am nourished, I am abundant, I am healthy. I have one minute left on the clock. Ooh, I am surprised at how challenging this is for me today. And you might notice some days are easier, some days are more challenging, and well, that's okay. Be kind and gracious with yourself. Mm. I am strong, I am safe, I am provided for, I am nourished, I am healthy. I am wealthy. more seconds. Smooth, deep breathing. And at your own time, lean forward to come out of it. Palms to the mat, untuck your toes. Tap the tops of the feet on the mat. If you were able to hold that the entire time, oh my goodness, you are amazing. <laughs> and let's take a downward facing dog just to counter all that action. So right away from here, get your hands into a externally rotated position. Slightly turn your palms out. Get your elbow creases to point forward at the top of the mat, elbows point straight back. So now your shoulders are in a wide, externally rotated position. Tuck your toes under, keep your shoulders externally rotated, and lift your hips to the sky. Smooth, deep breathing. Pedal out your knees left and right. <sighs> Maybe a soft bend in the elbows. Shake your head yes, shake your head no. 
And then from here, let's hold downward facing dog, bend your knees, press your belly towards your thighs, lift your hips up to the sky, and I want you to think about elongating your spine more than straightening your legs. Get your spine as long as you can get your spine here. And then, once you're as long as you can get, you can start to straighten your legs, maybe. Okay, keep the length of the tailbone tipping upward. Notice if the shoulders went internal and see if you can wrap them again externally rotated. Feel your palms pressing into the floor, firmly rooted. Equal weight in the arms and in the legs. Press a little bit more weight into your legs. And then drop your knees to the mat. Separate your knees, bring your big toes to touch for child's pose. Reach your arms forward, drop your forehead to the mat. And deepen your breathing. Long, slow, smooth breath. You stay there in child's pose. I'm just coming up because my mic is so close to my face, I don't wanna be so loud. <laughs> so stay in your child's pose. And just start to rock your forehead right and left on the mat. So massage out your third eye, roll your forehead on the mat, rub out any tension in your brain, in your thoughts that's keeping you from being in your body. Sometimes our root chakra issue is because we have so much energy in our higher chakras that we forget about our lower ones. Especially in the spiritual community, we can think that, oh, it's all about ascension and spirituality and enlightenment and 5D, but we forget that we are human and we are here now on earth in this physical body and taking care of our physical body and our well-being in general, our home, our finances, is just as necessary and important as our spiritual work. So we want to get out of the head and back into the body. And take your time, walk yourself out of child's pose. Back up to all fours, plant your palms underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips, and take cat-cow. Drop your belly down to the earth. Lift your chest, your gaze, and your tailbone as you inhale, look up. And exhale, press the ground away from you, round your back, tuck your chin to your chest. Inhale, belly down, gaze up, look forward. Exhale, round, chin to chest, gaze to navel. Two more just like this. Smooth, deep breathing. And back to neutral on an inhale, tuck your toes back under, return to downward facing dog. Try your best to keep external rotation in your shoulders. Look forward between your hands, walk your feet up, and just hang out here in a forward fold. Separate your feet about hip width apart, and waterfall your torso over your thighs. Grab opposite hand to opposite elbow. Relax your head, your shoulders, your neck. Sway right and left. And play with your foundation. Play with your feet. Move the weight more into the right foot, more into the left foot. And then find center. Press evenly through all four corners of your foundation, both feet. And begin to tip your pelvis forward. Shift your weight more towards the balls of your feet so that your hips go from your heels forward. And maybe slowly start to straighten the legs. Keep the connection of belly to thigh. What limiting beliefs about your foundation can you shake out now? 
what limiting beliefs about your future, your safety, your career, your worth, worthiness. Let it go. Shake your head no. Shake your head yes. Imagine all limiting beliefs and thoughts falling out of the head and going back to the earth. Give it back to the earth. Let it go. <sighs> Drop your hands to the earth. Take a halfway lift on your inhale. Palms to your shins. Straighten your legs. Flatten your spine. Lengthen through the back of the skull. Pull your shoulders away from your ears. Suck your belly into your navel. Strong core. Exhale, fold back over the thighs. <sighs> Bend your knees a lot. Weight into your legs with a flat back. Inhale, reach up, look up, take the hands up to the sky, and hold here in Utira Hasta in Tadasana. Hands reach up to the sky, palms open, belly into back body, firm through the feet. Mm. I am worthy, I am enough, I am safe, I am provided for. I am healthy. Allow yourself to reach and accept for all these things into your life. And as if they're right there at your fingertips, take all of those goodness and take it between the hands, hands to heart center, and just pull it down into your body, down into your heart, where you can keep it there, knowing it's the truth. <sighs> Hold here in Tadasana. So this is mountain pose, and this can be a really easy, lazy pose, or it can be a strong, activating, affirmative, confident reaffirmation of our worth. So this is an opportunity to hold your posture in the way you would hold your posture if you knew without a doubt that all those things were taken care of and true. Roll your shoulders down your back, firm through all four corners of your feet, activate your thighs, drop your buttocks down towards your heels, pull your hip points up towards your navel, suck your belly in, lift your chest up, draw your shoulders back, take your hands down by your side so you're totally open, chest up, smile through your face knowing all of that is true for you. Hold your body the way you would if you knew those things to be true. Beautiful. Take an inhale, reach the hands up. So your namaskar at A, palms touch at the top. Exhale, flat back, fold over your thighs. Hands touch the earth, drop your head, your neck, your belly. Inhale, halfway lift, bring your hands back to your shins, suck your belly button in. Plant your hands down, step your feet back to the top of a push-up. Strong core, press the floor away. Drop your knees as you exhale, bend your elbows, drop your chest and your chin, eight-pointed pose. Slither your belly down onto the ground. Tops of your toes touch the earth, feet together, take an inhale for baby cobra, pull your shoulders down away from your ears. Make sure your knees are lifted and all 10 toes are touching the mat. Exhale, lower your chest, your nose to the mat. Inhale, press the floor away from you. Come back to all fours. Tuck your toes under. Return to downward facing dog. <sighs> Pedal out your knees right and left. And as you go through your asana, I want you to embody and invoke the energy of grounded stability. Strong, confident, firm like a rock. Every single limb, every muscle, every inch of your body, active and engaged, firmed and turned on. Look forward between the hands. Inhale, step up to the top of the mat. Finish with a halfway lift. Exhale, fold over the thighs. Inhale, reach up, look up. Utita Hasta in Tadasana. Exhale, hands return to heart center, holding those intentions close to your heart. Bring your toes and heels to touch for Sarah Namaskar B. Bend into the knees on an inhale, reach your arms up. Weight is in the heels, like you're sitting in a chair. Exhale, fold over the thighs, straighten the legs. Half lift, breathe in. Step back, lower through your version of Chaturanga as you breathe out. 
Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, push back. Find your way into downward facing dog. Step your right foot through your hands on an inhale, spiral your back heel down and in. One breath, one movement for warrior one. Firm and strong. Exhale, plant your hands to frame your front foot. Pivot on the ball of the back foot. Step back, chaturanga, exhale. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, left foot forward. Turn your back heel in. Reach up, look up. One breath. Exhale, hands down. Lower through your version of chaturanga. Breathe out. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, press back, lift your hips. Three breaths here in downward facing dog. Feel the ground under your hands. Know it's the same earth that's been supporting you providing for you your entire life it's real you are real you deserve to be here you belong here on this planet this is your home mama earth has always been providing for you look up walk up to the top of the mat on an inhale half lift Exhale, fold. Toe heel your feet together. Sit back into your chair as you breathe in. Shift your weight into your heels. Look up, reach up from chair pose. Reach up, palms to touch, hands come back to heart center. Samasthi tihi. We'll move into tree pose. Vrikshasana, I'm gonna turn to face the camera, but you can just stay where you are. Bring your hands to your hips. Bring your weight into your left leg, bend your right leg, and open your right knee like you're opening a gate. So your right heel is touching your left standing ankle. And you can either stay here if you already are feeling wobbly, or you can start to slide your right foot up your left shin, or maybe all the way into your thigh. Or you can take half lotus here by grabbing onto your right ankle and crossing the right ankle over the costume and drop your right knee back. So whatever variation feels good to you, I'm gonna do foot to thigh. And once you find stability, focus your gaze on one point out in front of you. So just like a tree, we're going to find our roots here. Root down through all four corners of the standing foot. Feel all the feet muscles and bones activating and moving and see if you can lift out of your left standing hip and even out the hips hands are at heart center or maybe you grow your branches and reach your hands up to the sky smooth deep breathing I am safe I am grounded I am provided for And then bring your hands back to your heart center. Turn your right knee forward. Step your right foot down and give it a little shake. You might feel a little bit of a Charlie horse or a foot cramp. That's what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> and we'll switch sides. Weight is in your right foot, hands to hips. Bend your left knee, open your left knee like a gate. And then maybe slide your foot up any amount whatever you did on the other side. Find one place to fix your gaze out in front of you. So it's with that conviction, right? That inner knowing that this is true for you. Hug your outer right thigh in toward the midline of the body. Grow out of the ribs, out of the hips. Maybe reach the arms up to the sky. I am healthy. I am abundant. I'm safe. What does it feel like to embody that in this shape? 
to accept that and welcome it into your life, even if it's not true for you yet? Can you welcome and open yourself up to receiving that as your truth without resisting or pushing it away or saying that will never be true for me? Root down through your feet, grow out and up from the roots. And then hands come back to heart center. Turn your left knee in, step your left foot down. Shake it out, Tadasana. Wonderful. Return to your top of your mat if you're not there already. And bring your hands to your hips. Bend into your knees and weight is in your right leg. Step your left foot straight back for Vira Bhadrasana 1. So your hips are forward or about 45 degrees. You have heel to heel alignment and reach your arms up towards the sky, deep bend into your front leg. Anchor down through the knife edge of the back foot, press down through the ball of the front foot. Peel your right hip back, your left hip forward and lengthen out of the ribs, out of the shoulders. Bring your hands back behind you and interlace your fingers. Pull your palms now past your glutes. See if you can roll your shoulder blades together. Maybe the heels of your hands touch. Keep the soft bend or deep bend in your front knee for warrior one. And with humble gratitude for all of these things that are to come, more wealth, more opportunities, more security, better health, with thanks, bow to the earth. Drop your heart and your head to your inner right knee. Relax your head and neck to your inner calf and reach your arms up towards the sky. Connect your right knee to your right shoulder. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And inhale to come up. Reach your arms back up. Pivot on the ball of the back foot. Lift your back heel up. So now you're in a crescent lunge, back heel is lifted. And reach your arms up towards the sky. You can take a soft bend in your back knee to get your hips in a neutral position. We're going to move into warrior three, a balancing pose. Drape your upper body over your front knee, reach your arms forward, shift your weight into your front leg and lift your back leg up. Warrior three pose. <laughs> you can flex your back foot or point your back toe, whatever feels good for you, but drop your left hip down so both hips point down towards the earth. Anchor through your standing leg, reach through your fingertips. Hold here, feeling your firm foundation in just your right foot. And then drop your hands to the earth. One last kick into the back leg for standing splits. Kick and drop both feet down. Forward fold, shake it out. Hmm. Lift up the balls of your feet now and slide your hands underneath the balls of your feet to stand on your hands. Make sure that your toes are touching your wrist crease. It's like a gorilla pose. Bend your elbows out left and right. Sandwich your belly onto your front thighs. Relax your head and neck. And if you feel like you want a little bit of a deeper stretch, begin to straighten your legs. Any amount. Slide your hands out, drop the balls of the feet to the mat. Half lift on an inhale. And exhale full. Bend your knees a lot, inhale, reach out left and right, return to Tadasana, bring your hands to your heart center. How are you doing? All right, let's keep it going. Same thing on the left side. Bring your hands to your hips, toes and heels together. Bend your knees, weight is in your left leg. Step your right leg straight back for warrior one. You have heel to heel alignment. Turn your hips forward 45 degrees and reach your arms up, deep bend in your front leg. Root down through your back heel, press into the knife edge of your back foot. 
See if you can lengthen evenly on both sides of the torso as you grow up and out of your roots. Hug your outer front thigh in toward the midline of your body as you turn your back hip forward. Smooth, deep breathing. Interlace your hands back behind your low back. Pull your shoulder blades down and in. Lift your heart up. And with gratitude in your heart, bow down to the earth. Relax your head and neck. Connect your outer shoulder to your inner knee. And allow yourself to equally surrender into your upper body as you are working in your lower body. Where can you find softness and surrender? Part of this root chakra healing is also to receive. On your next inhale, come out and up, reach up. And hands to hips, pivot on the ball of the back foot, turn your back heel up, lift it up. Both hips point exactly forward. Now you can do a micro bend in your back knee to lift your pelvis up. Deep bend in the front leg, reach up, look up. You might even feel a stretch across your right hip flexor. That's awesome. And warrior three, reach forward, drape your belly over your front thigh. Shift your weight into your left leg and you might take whoop, baby steps to lift up and out. Find one spot on the floor. Reach forward, kick back for three, two, right hip down, one, drop your hands to the mat, one final kick in your lifted leg, head to shin, and then drop both feet down. Bend your knees, shake it out. And let's take malasana. I'm gonna turn, you stay there. Drop your hips, your sit bones to your heels, turn your feet out. Parallel for Malasana squat. If your heels don't touch the mat, that's okay. You can roll your mat up and drop your heels onto the edge to get a little lift. Or you can grab your block and sit on your block for Malasana. So whatever feels good for you, sitting in Malasana and hands at heart center. And just rock it out. So we've been doing a lot of balancing on the feet, working with the legs, all of the things that are our foundation in our life, right? If we could get our feet, our ankles, our shins, our thighs strong and our knees, these are the foundation that holds the rest of our body up. So what moves us forward in life, literally carries us along which is representative of the root chakra. The root chakra rules over all of these lower body places. So that's why we're doing so much work with the lower body, working on strengthening and firming, being confident on one foot, <laughs> confident on the, in the feet, confident in where we stand in our life. So we'll just take a little twist here. Drop your right hand down outside of your right pinky toe. So it's a big stretch here. And reach your left arm up for a twist. Look up, reach up. And if you can, you can take a bind. To take the bind, just do internal rotation in your bottom hand. So turn your palm back and away from you, your thumb down, and reach your arm back. <laughs> left arm meets it. And maybe you can grab finger to finger. And if that's not happening, that's okay. Just big reach and we'll just switch sides. Inhale, lift up at center, hands at heart center, and exhale, reach and twist any amount. It doesn't matter if you have the bind or you don't have the bind. Just press your tricep into your inner knee, reach up, look up. Find the balance between rooting down and lifting and growing upward, right? Maybe you have the bind. So this is what it's all about as we start to heal and work on our chakras. It's not just <laughs> ascend and reach out and go up, it's also anchor down. So we want equal work in both planes. We wanna be anchored in our humanity and also reaching and striving for the higher realms. And bring your hands back to heart center. One more lift 
And then slowly shift back onto your sit bones and extend your legs straight out in front of you. Give your legs a little shake, 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 shake. Bring your toes and heels together in a butterfly position. Your knees out for cobbler's pose. Grab onto your toes and lift your chest up. So if it feels good, you can slide your heels back in toward the midline of your body and use your strength of your thighs to press your knees down. Lift your chest up. If this feels too strenuous, just scoot your heels farther away from the midline of your body for a more relaxed cobbler's pose. But whatever the case, let's lean forward. So press your elbows down into your knees. Extend your heart forward and offer yourself over your thighs. I like to press into my knees and get a stretch in my inner thighs. See how that feels for you? And I also like to open up my feet like bookends, grab the feet and peel the feet apart because it helps me get even more externally rotated in my thighs. So find what works for you. Anchor down through your sit bones and reach your knees toward the earth. Mm. My needs matter. I deserve to be here. I am worthy of my needs being met. I deserve safety, security, prosperity. Go to your deepest edge with your forward fold. Maybe that requires you to round your back a little bit. Nose to toes. And then inhale, slowly come up. Use your hands to close your knees and straighten your legs and give yourself a little wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Take your shins out in front of your mat, left shin down to the front of the mat and right shin on top. So you're stacking your shins at the front of the mat in a fire log position. Left shin is down parallel, heel to knee, and right shin just crosses over and traces the bottom shin. So both shins are stacked, flex through the feet, activate the feet, activate the toes, and then see what it feels like to bring weight into your right knee. You can bring your hands onto your right knee, and if that feels okay, you might be ready to fold forward, but if this is already too much, which it might be, just stay here and hang out. Otherwise, you can fold forward over your front shins and bring your heart down, your head down, and fold. So here, notice if your feet go limp, and I want you to keep them activated and turned on. So again, working with the foundation, working with the lower body, we're now getting into the hips, and the glutes, the piriformis, the outer thigh, all of these muscles in our legs and our foundation. But if we don't keep our feet turned on, we risk injury in the knee. So it just goes to show that our foundation is always first, even when we're working with parts of the body that seem to have nothing to do with our feet, like this one. Our foundation is always first. So that's why in life, it's so important for us on the spiritual path to make sure that we take care of our foundation as part of our spiritual work, that we take care of our own security, our own safety. We take care of the things that maybe were a little bit chaotic or not provided for us when we were children, like your career, a steady home, finances. Sometimes when we have root chakra trauma, we want to run away and abandon all of those things and we see spirituality as an outlet to escape the physical reality. But the chakra system is proof that shows us that there's no escaping because it's all a part of it. This existence in our humanity is part of our spiritual journey. That's why we're incarnated as who we are in this life, because we are meant to be here. We are, we are here purposefully. So it's very important that we start to reparent and take care of those things with the utmost responsibility and heal our root. So feet are turned on even now in a pose that seems to have nothing to do on your next inhale, come up. 
and unbind, shake your legs out, and we'll take it on the other side. This time, right shin down, fire log, heel to knee alignment, and stack your left shin on top this time. And just notice if one side feels tighter than the other. You can bring your hands onto your left knee to add a little bit of weight. And if that feels okay, then go ahead and fold. Take it nice and slow. Make sure your feet stay activated and turned on. Keep them turned on. Keep awareness in your feet, awareness in your foundation. Go for the fold. So your anchor here is your sit bones. Continue to keep weight there in the sit bones as you lengthen and reach out of the hips. If we don't have the weight in the anchor in the hips, the stretch disappears because there's nothing to hold us down as we extend out. So have awareness in your weighted foundation, just like in our lives. We have to build a firm foundation to grow and expand out of never letting it go. Just a few more breaths here in fire log fold. Go to your deepest level if you haven't already. Completely relax and surrender into this deep hip stretch. And inhale, slowly start to come up and out of it. Lean back. Shake your legs out in front of you. Give them a little bend and tap and sweep both legs back behind you now to sit on your heels and I will turn sideways so you can see you're just sitting on your heels with the tops of the feet down and with your tops of your feet on the mat bring your hands back behind you and see how it feels to just lift one knee at a time one knee at a time so you're stretching the tops of your feet again working with the feet so much feet work in this root chakra class. And if it feels good, squeeze the knees together and bring both knees off of the mat and just lean into it, stretching the tops of the feet. See how that feels. Might be too much. Not so okay, just do what you can. And then return to center. If you need to shake it out, come onto all fours, lengthen your right leg. Ball the foot to the mat, press through your right heel, and then the other side, stretch it out. And then return, sit back onto your heels. So we're going to do Kapalabhati breathing through the nose. So Kapalabhati breathing is a forceful exhale and a natural inhale. It looks like this. And we're doing it through the nose as the nose and smell is the first sense to develop out of the root chakra. So we're activating the nose in hopes that we're stirring up some unconscious buried baggage in the root. So as we work with the nose, the sense of smell, the sniffing and the breathing, we're activating and stirring up our root chakra. And the root chakra starts to develop when we're in the womb of our mother. So even if there's trauma from the womb of being a C-section, getting ripped out prematurely, um, anything unhealed from the root chakra development phase, we're hoping to stir up and activate to be brought to the surface to be healed. So as we do this breath, uh, keep that intention in your heart to be healed, for things to be revealed and cleared, all things regarding the root safety, your right to exist, your right to be here, your right to take up space, your right to have your needs met, your right to have a safe home environment, to have a family that loves you, to have uh, nourishment and health. Some of these things you might feel like, well, there's no hope for that because I have a tumultuous family life, so my family doesn't love me. But even the things that seem impossible, we can provide for ourselves now as adults. So we can reparent ourselves, we can create the home we never have, we could create the family environment that we never had. And this is taking ownership over our root, the things that maybe weren't given and provided for us, and saying, I will now provide that for myself. 
So we'll do Kapalabhati breathing here for two minutes and I have a clock out in front of me. And again, it looks like this, hands are on the knees and it's a snapping of the belly back. You can do it slower, you can do it fast. Forceful exhale, the inhale just comes naturally. You might need a tissue, which I don't have any by me, but, uh, and we'll begin. So hands on knees, awareness in the root. You can close your eyes and think about that ruby red color and we'll begin. Snap the belly back, forceful exhale, natural inhale, tight abdominal. It's a purposeful pumping of the stomach. Keep it going, snap the belly back, forceful exhale, natural inhale, focus on the ruby red color in your mind's eye, you have one minute left. Speed it up for the last 30 seconds, so as much as you can. Just stroking the flame of the root chakra, getting as much energy as you can in the root. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale the breath out. And now I want you to hold the breath in. Inhale, big inhale, belly, ribs, chest. Hold the air in, push it down, down, down. Full lock, mula bandha, pull in and up at the perineum. And then maha bandha, pull the navel in and up and even the chin back, lock all three bandhas and hold that breath in. Charge up that ruby red energy at the root, at the base of the spine. Feel it expanding, brightening, gaining power as you retain the breath. Maybe one more sip of air. Hold. I will say these mantras for you. You keep that breath in for 30 more seconds. I am safe. I am home. I have enough. Abundance flows through me. My needs are met. The universe provides for me. I am enough. I am anchored and connected to the earth now. And then exhale, let it out. One more big breath in. And out. And then roll off to either hip, extend your legs forward and come to lay on your back. Come to lay on your back, hug your knees into your chest and just massage out your spine, rock right and left. So still working with the legs, extend your left leg straight out in front of you. Bring your right knee into your chest and interlace your 10 fingers just underneath the knee and pull your right knee over outside of your right rib cage toward your right armpit. Keep your left leg active, right? Left foot active as you pull the right knee into the chest, avoiding the rib cage. Keep both shoulders anchored down. Staying on the right leg now, take the right foot up toward the sky, grab the inside of the foot for half happy baby, and pull the right knee down to the earth outside of the rib cage, like you can put a big footprint on the ceiling. Flex through the right toes, keep your left leg active. So you can even test this. 
Let your left leg be loose and see how when you let kind of let it go, your left hip just lifts up. But now firm your left leg, flex through the toes and purposely keep your left hip anchored. Keep your foundation. Now grab onto your right big toe with right piece fingers and straighten your right leg straight out to the right. I have a chair in the way, but any amount, kick through your right heel. Take your right foot now up to the sky. Maybe grab outside of the foot, see if you can stretch and reach or grab onto your ankle and pull your shin in toward your face. Grab onto your shin, bend your elbows and try to bring your forehead to your shin any amount. And then lower down, bend your right knee, grab outside of your right knee with your left hand and pull your knee across your chest. Keep your right shoulder down, that's your ankle as you Relax into this twist. Look to the right, knee to the left. Smooth, deep breathing in this twist. And then return to center. Whew. Straighten both legs out. I'm gonna move my mic over to the other side. And let's do the same thing on the left leg. Bend your left knee. Bring your left knee into your chest and grab onto your left knee with all 10 fingers, just underneath the knee and take the left knee out to the left, avoid the rib cage, pull the knee toward the armpit, flex through the right toes and keep both shoulders anchored. Take a half happy baby, lift your left foot up towards the sky, bend deeply into your left knee and pull your left knee down earthbound as you anchor through your right heel and your right hip. Smooth, deep breathing. Straighten your left leg any amount. You can grab onto your big toe with peace fingers or whatever is accessible to you. Keep a rooted, anchored right hip, right heel. And then bring your straight left leg up towards center. Grab onto your ankle or keep your hand on your foot. Straighten your left leg. Pull your chest up towards your shin, your shin towards your chest for one breath. And then lower both legs down. Bring both knees into happy baby now. Bend your knees. Grab the insides of the feet and anchor down now through your sacrum, your sits bones, your sacrum, your low back. Notice if your low back lifts off of the mat and pull it down. So you're trying to get the spine flat on the mat. Maybe rock right and left, heels to the sky, chin to chest. And feel how your spine now is kissing the earth, every single vertebrae, connected and rooted to the ground. Feel how supported you are literally by the earth and by your spine. How your spine holds everything up and together. How the earth provides for you and now they are in complete unison and harmony. Maybe straighten your legs for the last little bit, last breath, and then hug your knees into your chest. Take an inhale, bring your chin up to your knees, squeeze your face, squeeze your knees, squeeze your hands, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Create an intentional tension in your body. And then exhale. Let your whole body soften and relax down into Shavasana. Whole body relax, let your feet fall open. Position your shoulder blades in and together so that there's a soft lift in your chest, palms up towards the sky. And you stay here. I'm gonna come out of it and pull a card for us. So smooth, deep breathing here. Whole body relaxed. There's nowhere to be, nowhere to go. You've already arrived. Let's take three deep cleansing breaths to fully ground into this moment and anchor into this present moment. Take an inhale through the nose, let your belly, your ribs, and your chest expand. And then audible sigh out, exhale. Completely relax. 
Inhale, belly, ribs, chest. Eche ha. And last one. Completely let go. Today I pulled for you, answer the call. What is your soul calling you to do? Your guidance is divinely guided. You are being called to answer the call of your soul. It might be scary. It might not be. It might not make sense right now. But if you trust your soul's yearning, you will live a life beyond what your mind could possibly imagine. Answering your soul's calling is not one time thing. Rather, it is a lifelong dance. Deep down, you already know what you long for. You already know what your soul yearns for. Whatever you are called to do, that thing is your calling. Don't overthink it. Don't wait for permission. Just say yes. Most people are waiting for a step-by-step -step plan before they take the first step. But intuition doesn't work like that. It takes faith and courage to answer the call of your soul. And that is why most people don't do it. But you are not most people. You are exactly in the right place to answer your calling now. You don't need to know the whole plan. You don't even know where it is leading. You just need to take the next step. No one has ever had the complete perfect plan. There is no end destination. There is no right or wrong way to do it. And you do not need permission from anyone else. Sometimes the more resistance we have around answering the soul calling, the more important it is for our soul's growth. What is your soul calling you to do? Take a deep breath into that. so perfect that this call this card was intuitively pulled for your root chakra because it seems that the divine guidance right now in this moment is that your root chakra is going to be taken care of your basic needs your home your family your career your finances when you finally do the thing you're too afraid to do see you think that if you do that thing you're risking your safety and security that's why you can't do it when actually spirit, the divine God, is trying to hint to you that that thing was put in your heart because that is the thing that's going to provide for you. That is the thing that's going to provide for you. So just say yes. I'm going to play the root chakra singing bowl for you now. Just let your body settle into that awareness. divine guidance that I am being given now. All is well. in your Shavasana and I will close this with the final Lam sound seed. Lam. May we be able to accept this divine guidance that we've been given today and receive the abundance that is waiting for us.
and stay open to saying yes to feeling provided for, feeling safe, feeling healthy, feeling abundant, feeling nourished in all ways, all ways. From my heart to yours, thank you so much for sharing this practice. Please come back every day until you start to feel the shift in your root chakra in your life. Namaste.